Welcome to our latest video on the topic of buffers. This video is suitable for A-level students. Now by the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of the term buffer and how buffer systems work, and you should also understand their importance in biological systems and industrial processes. So let's start this video lesson by looking at the meaning of the term buffer. Now buffers are solutions whose pH stays relatively constant as a small amount of acid or alkali is added. And the buffer solution maintains a nearly constant pH by removing any added H plus or OH minus ions. So a buffer solution resists or minimizes changes in pH when small amounts of acid or alkali are added. Now buffer solutions play an important role in many industrial processes they're used, for example, in electroplating. They're used in the manufacture of leather, dyes, cosmetic products, printing products, and photographic materials. And they're also used in the calibration of pH meters. So now let's explore the different uses of buffer solutions in a little more detail. Now, buffer solutions are used in the manufacture of many cosmetic products and shampoos. And they're really important because they keep the pH either neutral or slightly alkaline. And if the buffer solution wasn't there, the product may become too acidic in terms of its pH or too alkaline, and that could cause skin irritation. So the buffer is really, really important in maintaining a pH that is sensitive to the skin. Now in leather manufacture, they use buffers in tannin baths because pH is a factor that affects the texture of the leather. Buffers play an important role in printing because the pH of paper and inks need to be regulated to ensure that the ink penetrates the paper and dries properly. Buffers also play an important role when calibrating pH meters. You can see in the middle picture here a pH meter or pH probe being placed in solutions of known pH and these are buffered solutions. And these are used to calibrate the meter and check that it's reading the correct pH. Now, many biological systems depend on the action of buffers to maintain a constant pH. And buffers are therefore used when using or storing enzymes to ensure that the pH remains at the optimum value. And also when storing biological molecules, such as pharmaceuticals, which would denature at the incorrect pH. So to explain why buffers are important when working with biological systems, I'm going to use the example of an enzyme. So on this slide, we have a picture of an enzyme. Now, an enzyme is a protein, and proteins are made up of individual amino acids. Now, the shape of a protein, the shape of an enzyme, changes with changes in pH. Now, enzymes work by combining with substrate molecules, the molecules that are taking part in chemical reactions. And it works like a lock and a key. The enzyme fits together with the molecules that are involved in the reaction. Now, if you change the shape of an enzyme, the enzyme can't combine with the substrate molecules and therefore can't work properly and can't speed up a chemical reaction. It's therefore very important that the shape of the enzyme, the shape of the protein, doesn't change. So the pH must be kept constant. And that's why buffers are used when you're working with proteins and enzymes and other biological molecules that are sensitive to changes in pH. And as I've mentioned already, buffers are used in many industrial processes. And one such process is fermentation. And fermentation is a process where sugars are turned to alcohol and it's used during baking and the production of alcohols. Now buffers are added before fermentation, the conversion of the sugar to the alcohol, to keep the pH at a specific level and to inhibit the acidity that would ruin the product. So now let's focus on how buffers work. Now several different buffer systems exist and one of the most common buffer systems is a buffer solution which is made from a weak acid and a salt of the same acid with a strong base. So for example, ethanoic acid is a weak acid. A salt of ethanoic acid is 
an FNO8. And if you choose sodium FNO8, that salt has been made from ethanoic acid and a strong base, sodium hydroxide. So if we have a buffer solution made up of ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate, we have a buffer solution here which has a high concentration of the anion ethanoate, CH3COO minus. And this is because sodium ethanoate will split up totally into ethanoate ions, CH3COO minus ions, and sodium ions. And the purpose of having the salt is because you want a high concentration of ethanoate ions because that's a key to how the buffer solution works. So let's look in detail how this buffer system works. Well, you have sodium ethanoate that splits up into ethanoate ions, CH3COO minus ions, and Na plus ions. And you have ethanoic acid that partially splits up into H plus ions and ethanoate ions. And there is a low concentration of ethanoate ions from just the ethanoic acid equilibrium because the equilibrium is to the left hand side it's a weak acid and only partially splits up into H plus ions and ethanoate ions so this is why having sodium ethanoate is vital here because having sodium ethanoate present means that you end up having a high concentration of ethanoate ions because the sodium ethanoate splits up totally into ethanoate ions and the ethanoate ions, the CH3COO minus ions, are vital in how the buffer system works. So now let's look how this buffer system resists or minimizes changes in pH when you add small amounts of H plus ions or OH minus ions. Now when you add H plus ions, these react with ethanoate ions, CH3COO minus ions, and the equilibrium here shifts to the left hand side. So the H plus ions that you've added are removed because they react with the ethanoate ions. So that's why it's very important to have lots of ethanoate ions present. So they can react with any H plus that's added and they can therefore remove the H plus because the equilibrium shifts to the left hand side. Now when an alkali is added to a buffer, you're adding OH minus ions. Now the OH minus ions react with any H plus ions in solution, and this causes the concentration of H plus ions to initially decrease, which therefore raises the pH. However, the presence of a buffer resists this because when the H plus concentration drops, because the H plus ions have reacted with any OH minus ions that you've added, the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to produce more H plus ions to replace the H plus ions that have been removed by OH minus ions. And therefore this maintains the pH. So that's how this buffer system works. Now it's also important to recognize Le Chatelier's principle in action here. Now if we add alkali, Remember, the OH minus ions are reacting with H plus ions and are removing H plus ions from solution. And it's Le Chatelier's principle that kicks in here and the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to replace the H plus ions that have been lost. So remember, Le Chatelier's principle is this idea that if you put a constraint on an equilibrium, the equilibrium shifts to remove or oppose the constraint that you put on it. Likewise, when you add H plus ions, you're increasing the amount of H plus ions and the equilibrium is trying to minimize or oppose the change. And that's why the equilibrium shifts to the side that removes H plus. Once again, it's Le Chatelier's principle in action. Now in both cases, the pH of the solution does not stay totally constant. However, the buffer does prevent any significant changes in pH taking place. So now let's test your understanding of this with some practice questions.
So here's the first practice question, and it's in three parts, and the first two parts are on this slide. So read through the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first practice question says methanoic acid is a component of a buffer solution used in shampoos and it says that the buffer solution can be made by mixing methanoic acid with another chemical and it's asking you to state what is meant by a buffer solution. Well a buffer solution is a solution which resists or minimizes changes in pH when you add small amounts of acid and alkali. So if you said it's a solution which resists or minimizes changes in pH even when small amounts of acid and alkali are added, you get one mark. Now part two of this question focuses on the chemical that you mix with methanoic acid to make the buffer solution. Okay, so part two is asking you to suggest a chemical that could be added to methanoic acid to prepare a buffer solution and to explain your answer. So the chemical needs to be a salt of methanoic acid and it needs to be a salt that's made from a strong base of methanoic acid. So a strong base or strong alkali is sodium hydroxide. The salt that you would get if you mixed sodium hydroxide and methanoic acid would be sodium methanoate. That would have a formula H-C-O-O-N-A. And the reason that you need this chemical is because it releases methanoate ions which are needed for the buffer system to work. So there's one mark for the correct chemical, sodium methanoate, or any salt that's made from a strong base and methanoic acid. And one mark for saying it releases methanoate ions, HCOO minus ions, and these are needed for the buffer system to work. And you can see here, I put in an equation to show you how methanoate ions are released. So HCOONA splits them into HCOO minus plus Na plus. So here's the final part of question one. Read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So question 1c is asking you to explain how this buffer system works to maintain the pH within a small range. And it's a three mark question. So I've written out the equations here that explain how this buffer system work. So we have sodium methanoate, HCOONA, splitting up into methanoate ions and sodium ions. And we have methanoic acid partially splitting up into H plus ions and methanoid ions. And if you had the correct equilibrium process here, methanoic acid splitting up into H plus ions and methanoid ions, you get one mark. Now for the second mark, you need to explain what happens when you add acid, H plus ions. So when you add H plus ions, the H plus ions react with the methanoid ions, the HC O, O minus ions and the equilibrium shifts to the left hand side so this is how the H plus ions are removed they react with methanoid ions and the equilibrium shifts to the left hand side so this idea of the H plus ions reacting with the methanoid ions and the equilibrium shifting to the left gets you one mark now for the final mark, you need to explain what happens when you add OH minus ions. So when alkali in the form of OH minus ions are added, the OH minus ions react with any H plus ions in solution. The H plus concentration therefore decreases initially and the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to replace any H plus that has been removed by reacting with OH minus ions. So when the alkali is added, the H plus ions in solution react with OH minus ions, the H plus concentration decreases, and the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to replace any H plus that's been removed. And this maintains the pH. If you said that, you get the final mark.
So there's a total of three marks for this question. So to summarize, you get one mark for the correct equilibrium, one mark for the idea that H plus ions that you add are removed by reacting with HCOO minus ions and the equilibrium shift into the left. And you get the final mark for the idea that when you add alkali OH minus ions, these react with H plus ions in solution. This causes the H plus concentration to initially decrease. The equilibrium then shifts to the right hand side to replace any H plus ions that have been removed and the pH is maintained. So here's our final practice question. Read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. Now in question two, we have a similar buffer system. However, there is a difference in the fact that we have a weak base and a salt of a weak base. And this salt has been made with the weak base ammonia and a strong acid, hydrochloric acid. So we have ammonia and its salt, ammonium chloride. In our previous example, we had a weak acid and a salt of weak acid that had been made by a strong base. So the key equilibrium here is NH4 plus splitting up into NH3 and H plus. And it's asking you to explain how this system can act as a buffer when you add a small amount of acid or alkali. And it's a two mark question. So you have to use this equilibrium when explaining how the buffer keeps the pH relatively constant when small amounts of acid and alkali are added. So when you add acid, H plus ions, the H plus ions are reacting with the NH3, they're reacting with the ammonia, and this causes the equilibrium to shift to the left hand side. So the ammonia reacts with H plus ions, removing the extra H plus ions that you've added. And there's one mark for that idea. Now when alkali, OH minus ions are added, what happens then is that the OH minus ions react with any H plus ions in solution. This causes the H plus concentration to drop. Now this decrease in H plus ions is addressed by the equilibrium because the equilibrium shifts to replace any H plus ions that have been lost. So it's Le Chatelier's principle here taking place. So the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to replace any H plus ions that have been lost and therefore the pH is maintained. So in summary when you add acid the equilibrium is shifting to the left because the ammonia reacts with any H plus ions that you've added and when you add alkali the H plus concentration drops because it reacts with any OH minus ions that you've added and the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to replace this H plus ions that have been lost. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video you should now be able to explain the meaning of the term buffer and how buffer systems work and you should also understand their importance in biological systems and industrial processes. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos and our Twitter site, at Radochemistry.